We begin with an update this morning. The Stevens Point Area Public School District says it needs more money and is asking taxpayers for help. A $14 million referendum will be on the April ballot. This year is the earliest summer has arrived since, get this ET, 1796. Wow. That was 228 years ago. A long ago. time ago. That's right. It was back when there were only 16 states and George Washington was the president. What do you think, Audrey? You're going to... Sounds fun. 145 feet. You're going to go up that? Is it a drop? Or is it just so well, I look, it looked kind of swirly to oh, me. Okay, because if it was a drop, no thank you. That sounds like a massive My wedgie. question is, is how do you get up there, too? They better have an elevator or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, you have to climb. That's right. Yeah. Breaking news just into our newsroom this morning. Country singer Toby Keith died Monday at the age of 62 after a battle with stomach cancer. Keith was diagnosed with stomach cancer in 2022. Okay, so let's get right into it. Uh, so you vetoed the roundabout plan at 4th and Division. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the update on that? So uh, at our last council meeting, uh, a little more than a week ago now, um, the council did vote to override that veto. Happening today, the Wausau Police Department is officially swearing in their new police chief. Current Deputy Police Chief Matt Barnes will take the reins during a ceremony tonight at 5.30. Let's now take a live look from our downtown Wausau sky cam. The uh, clouds are moving in. It was a nice calm day out there today for Easter Sunday. Hopefully you're able to get out there and enjoy the sun at least. We have some breaking news this morning out of Appleton. One person was sent to the hospital after a shooting involving police. Officials say it happened near the Maritime Tavern at around 1.30 this morning. You can buy this traded card too. <laughs> you see? Only $39. <laughs> so maybe you can trade up for it. That's true. <laughs> the lights, camera, and action may soon return to Tinseltown. Leaders with the Writers Guild of America voted in favor of its members going back to work one minute after midnight. Attorney General Josh Cohn says he's leading a coalition of 42 attorneys general to allow funding for the Federal Crime Victims Fund. Well, Aaron, good morning and happy Groundhog Day. Uh, there's a lot we're looking forward to. We are still awaiting to hear the answer from that famous weather woodchuck out there in Pennsylvania. My uh, co-workers are kind of giving me the business about that, so <laughs> I need some ideas of what to get for Christmas gifts. Uh, what do you have here for us? Hey, you and me both, Tony, but okay, I good. have some great gift suggestions. In Packers coverage this morning, the team is expecting to be getting two of their biggest offensive of weapons back for tomorrow's game against the Lions. Head coach Matt LaFleur says he's cautiously optimistic that running back Aaron Jones will be back. Yeah. I think they're good. I like shamrock shakes. Yeah, I, I do don't. like shamrock shakes too. Well, you and I will go and then there we'll just we go. Leave I'll give me a strawberry shake, okay? No, it's got to we'll be shamrock. We'll think about it. That's, uh -oh. <laughs> it's, it's not part of the season, Audrey. Aww. It is a first alert weather day. We've got the latest on the impact from a major winter storm that will impact the Badger State, including some heavy snow, strong winds, and treacherous travel conditions. Details in your first alert forecast. I just thought that they would have been still here today. And the two boys who died in a Sun Prairie pond earlier this week are being remembered. Why their mom believes more could have been done to prevent the tragedy. Plus, the U.S. and U.K. bombed an Iran-backed group in response to attacks along the Red Sea trade route, what congressional leaders are saying. And later, a dedicated program in Wausau is helping people overcome writer's block. Sunrise 7's Chandler Ducker will be in studio this morning to explain how. You're waking up with Sunrise 7. Well, good morning and thanks for waking up with us on this Friday morning. I'm Tony Langfellow. Aaron Taylor has the day off. Let's send it over to meteorologist Jeremy Tabin right away here on this first alert weather day. Uh, Jeremy, good morning. Uh, looks like we're in for quite a bit of snow today compared to the last couple of days, huh? Yeah, this will be our biggest snowfall so far this winter season for most locations. A lot more details on all of this coming up. All right, see you in a bit, Jeremy. Well, we're taking a live look at road conditions across north central Wisconsin with the 511 road conditions map. You can see there's not a lot of color in the map in our area right now, but it is trending in our direction. Just a reminder that purple means slippery stretches, red means roads are ice covered, blue means that there's snow covered, and green means that you're good to go. Be sure to give yourself plenty of time as you're heading out the door this morning. Well, with the incoming winter storm today, many area schools have called classes off. This includes Abbotsford School District, Anago School District, D.C. Everest Schools, Marshfield, Stevens Point, Wisconsin Rapids, and the Wausau School District. But that's only a few of them. Many, there are many more school closures today. To keep up on the closings, watch the ticker at the bottom of your screen. And for a full list, head to our website at WSAW.com. Some communities are already declaring snow emergencies because of the snow. Plover and Stevens Point both start at noon today. Plovers goes until noon Saturday and points goes until 6 a.m. Saturday. 
No cars could be parked on streets. Many places are closing for the day as well. We have a list of those on our website. While we're in for our second snowstorm this week, other parts of the country are getting their share of winter as well. This is video from North Platte, Nebraska. That's west of Lincoln. They're under a blizzard warning out there. The system that is bringing snow there in parts of Iowa is headed our way. Well, today's winter storm also comes as we head into a holiday weekend, which means many folks will be on the roads today and tomorrow. Road crews and first responders are preparing for the storm not just in north central Wisconsin, but across the state as well. In Green Bay, the police department has a message and advice for drivers. They say if you plan to travel, you must have a plan. They saw about 15 crashes during Tuesday's storm. The commander of the department says most crashes can be prevented if drivers take their time, avoid distractions, and give other drivers plenty of room. As we go into tomorrow's snowstorm and then the cold weather, people just need to you know, slow down, you know, have a plan, prepare, um, and then just mentally you know, build in some time in their day to go a little slower and make sure that they're not in a rush so that we can prevent these crashes from occurring. If you're planning to travel on the interstate, the Department of Transportation reminds drivers to check out the 511 maps to see real-time road conditions and traffic cameras. While road crews can plan for all types of snowstorms, sometimes there are storms that bring extra challenges with them. And in northeast Wisconsin, the remnants of Tuesday's storm are still visible. Some north-facing traffic lights and road signs that help direct southbound traffic are still covered in snow. The way Tuesday's storm blew into the region is the exact opposite of what public works officials like to see. Heavy wet snow with high winds being driven directly out of the north. Um, that's one of our one of our two conditions that we worry about the most uh, as far as being a perfect storm. The LED bulbs in the traffic lights don't burn hot enough to melt the snow. Green Bay road crews were sent out to check lights on Thursday and when necessary, they were cleaned off. One place that's ready for the snow is Sylvan Hill in Wausau. So far, staff at the Tubing Hill have had to delay their season twice. Now they're set to open today. Staff say they're ready to go, but will close the hill if it gets too cold. Details can be found on their Facebook page. And we can help you stay ahead of any upcoming severe weather. All you have to do is download our First Alert weather app. It gives you access to radar alerts and warnings specific to your area. It's free for Apple and Android. Five minutes after the hour and new details this morning, the two boys who died in a Sun Prairie Pond rescue earlier this week are being remembered at a candlelight vigil. Former teachers, friends, family and community members remember the strong relationship the brothers had with each other. One of the boys fell through the ice in the pond and the other tried to rescue him. The mom of the two boys says her family recently moved to the area with hopes to have a great start in the new year. I just thought that they would have been still here today. We just had so many plans. I've had so many plans for them. I mean, church, um, you know, Odyssey. Kiana believes more could have been done to help save her sons as bystanders watched while they were stuck in the ice. Happening today, the Office of Children's Mental Health will brief legislators and the public about the status of children's mental health in Wisconsin. The 2023 annual report will be discussed starting at 10 a.m. The report will detail concerning trends and what can be done to improve children's well-being. Republican Representative Pat Snyder of Schofield is one of the speakers. He's the Legislative Children's Caucus co-chair. You can watch the briefing live on WISI. Six minutes after the hour and new this morning, President Joe Biden says the U.S. and U.K. struck more than 60 Houthi targets in Yemen overnight. That's in response to the Iran-backed group's attacks on commercial shipping vessels along the Red Sea trade route. The attacks threatened to drive up the cost of oil, gas and other goods globally. Biden says he ordered the attack with backing from the Netherlands, Canada, Bahrain and Australia. Some congressional leaders are expressing bipartisan support for the strikes, but it's unclear what lawmakers knew in advance. We haven't been briefed on the specifics of these strikes, but I expect that we will be in the days ahead. The kinds of attacks that they've been conducting since November 19th uh, will not be tolerated. Meanwhile, a senior Biden administration official says more action could follow. With sub-zero high at minus one. Just about 10 minutes after the hour and next on Sunrise 7, a new program for youth in lacrosse is helping out first responders. More on how every second matters in a crisis and how kids are offering some major help. I don't know if I can tear it all the way down or what, but just... Kind of a landmark.
Right now on Sunrise 7, a building collapse in Anago leaves a mess downtown. What we know so far is crews begin to clean up. It's a bit of a wet start this morning as we have light rain moving in. Temperatures warm Wednesday and over the weekend. Find out how hot it will go coming up. Plus, the total solar eclipse has come and gone. We'll take you to a viewing event held at UW-Stevens Point. And later, a weight loss drug does more than just that. It also helps lower symptoms from a disease. Sunrise 7's Chandler Doctor will be in studio to explain. You're waking up with Sunrise 7. Good morning and thank you so much for waking up with us here on Sunrise 7. I'm Aaron Taylor. And I'm Tony Langfellow. Well, Aaron, good morning. We are post solar eclipse now and from what I'm hearing, it was a pretty good show out there. Yeah, definitely a pretty good show if you weren't in all the cloud coverage yes. that we were up here. <laughs> um, and that gloomy weather is continuing this morning, Audrey, looking yes. pretty rainy out there to start off our Tuesday. Yeah, right. so we're the still temperatures right around the low to mid 50s. Our top story this morning, we're waiting to learn what caused a partial building collapse in downtown Anago. The building lost part of its brick exterior Monday afternoon and left a hefty cleanup in its aftermath. Located off Fifth Avenue and Superior Street, people say the building has been abandoned for years. It also showed signs of wear. Shortly after crumbling, the city began the cleanup. Right over here, some of the bricks had fallen off and that that's probably what prompted them to get it down before it fell down. It's going to be awful weird to see the building. I don't know if they're going to tear it all the way down or what, but just I don't know, kind of a landmark. Fortunately, no injuries were reported up from the collapse. And according to County Land Records, the owner of the building is Apostolic Adventures LLC with a P.O. Box address in Kiel. Well, we have continuing coverage this morning in the search for Elijah Vu. Search efforts have moved to a scrapyard known for a different case. Monday's search took place in the Avery Auto Salvage Yard connected to the Stephen Avery case. Searchers said there's no evidence to link the missing three-year-old boy to the Avery family. They say the search was not based on new information. Volunteer searchers got special permission from the Avery family to search the property. They looked anywhere the toddler could be. There's always that dark side that makes you fear the worst um, and pray that he's okay and he's alive and hopefully he will be found alive. Um, so we have to stay positive and just keep praying that, that he'll be found and can come home safe. Volunteers plan to continue the search today. We have an update on an overdose death case in Portage County. Online court records say 42-year-old Kenneth Harden pleaded not guilty to a charge of hiding a corpse. The body of a 41-year-old man was found in a ditch in Portage County in 2022. Prosecutors say Harden refused to take the victim to the hospital. He's in jail on a $25,000 cash bond and is due back in court in June. Well, just over one year ago, two police officers in Barron County were killed in the line of duty. On April 8, 2023, Shatek Police Officer Emily Breidenbach and Cameron Police Officer Hunter Scheel were shot and killed while conducting a traffic stop. A memorial for Officer Breidenbach was unveiled outside the Shatek Police Department Monday afternoon. Next month, their names will be revealed on the Wisconsin Law Enforcement Memorial in Madison and at the Law Enforcement Memorial in Washington, D.C. Well, new this morning, now that, now that a jury has been selected in Idaho, the trial of doomsday prophet Chad Daybell will soon be underway. Daybell is accused of murdering his second wife's children, J.J. and Ty Lee. He's also facing charges for the murder of his first wife. Daybell pleaded not guilty to all of the crimes he's been accused of. Opening statements for Daybell are scheduled to begin tomorrow morning. Also new this morning, tax day is less than a week away. And if you haven't filed your 2023 taxes yet, time is running out. The deadline is Monday, April 15th. Everyone's taxes look different, but the most common documents you'll likely need to file are a W-2. That's your official wage and tax statement from your employer, a 1099 form, which are given by independent contractors to business owners, and a 1098 form. That's if you have mortgage or student loan interest. Experts say the worst thing you could do is not file at all. One of those mistakes that we see people make is they just get scared. And so then they, they put it aside and they say, no, I don't want to deal with it at all, which is about the worst thing you can do. If you really do need more time, anyone can file for an extension, but you must do that by April 15th. That will give you until October 15th to file. Well, new information this morning. Since the pandemic, fewer Wisconsin students have reliably made it to school. 
According to new data, chronic absenteeism continues to climb. At DC Everest, about 19% of students are chronically absent. That means not showing up for 90% of the school year. At Stevens Point Senior High, nearly 26% of students are chronically absent. To address the numbers, SPASH is focusing on how they can get the students interested in learning. That means designing a curriculum tailored for them or offering tutoring. SPASH says many of their chronic absentee cases deal with mental health needs. We've certainly made very concerted and consistent efforts to ensure that students have access to additional intervention supports if there is an identified skill deficiency in a particular area. The D.C. Everest School District takes more of a team approach. Their staff conducts visits to the students' home. In your community this morning, whether you watched the solar eclipse here on News Channel 7 or saw it in person, it was still a memorable day. The next solar eclipse won't make its way to the Badger State for another 75 years. The last time Wisconsin saw a solar eclipse was August of 2017. UW Stevens Point held a viewing party for the show at Coleman Field Monday. People piled in early to catch a glimpse of the eclipse, and it certainly did not disappoint. I'm so glad I got to see it. Um, I thought it wasn't going to happen. It was really cool to see how it almost covered the entire sun. It's really exciting to have this opportunity to be able to look at kind of a more complete coverage of the sun. People were given safety glasses for Monday's solar eclipse, but for top-notch viewing, you could look through a telescope.